Pompia, Security Plus, the main three implementation. So domain three has a weightage of 25%. And this is a, this is the domain that has the maximum weightage of all the exam skills that are we are analyzing for CompTIA Security Plus. So in the first section, we will look at secure protocols. So we, we said to secure communication, we have to use secure protocols. So what are the secure protocols that are relevant in the information security or a cyber security environment? We will discuss all those protocols one by one. We will discuss secure DNS protocols, secure email communications, secure authentication protocols, secure file transfer protocols. So secure web, web communication protocols. One by one, we will discuss all the protocols, how it works and where it is being used. Then we will move to endpoint protection. So what are the endpoints? Laptops, desktops, mobile phones, servers. These are all endpoints that are connected to a network. How do we protect the endpoints? What are the different mechanisms that are used to protect endpoints? So anti-malware solutions, DLP solutions, host intrusion detection and prevention systems. These are all some of the examples. We will discuss them one by one. How to secure host machine booting during machine during the machine boot process how we can secure them we will look at the aspects of it what are the different technologies or what are the techniques that are used in securing databases and we will also look at the different options that are used as a part of application security so in this section we are actually looking at in 3.2 we are discussing how to secure our endpoints and how to secure our applications so there are different methods of securing our applications there are certain things that are implemented as a part of configuration and there are also things that are implemented as a part of design we will look at all these aspects then we will see what is meant by hardening operating hardening systems so every information system and an application that we have it should be properly hardened. So hardening, we harden these things by config, uh, developing security baselines and then configuring the system based on the security baselines. So how do we harden endpoints? We will look at each of these concepts one by one. We will look at the concepts of encryption, full disk encryption, trusted platform module, sandboxing. These are all concepts that are related to securing Post machines. Now, how do you implement security for networks? One is load balancing. So, load balancing means let us say we have two servers. 100 people are connecting to the server. So, I use a load balancer. The load balancer will split the connection. 50 users will be connected to one server another 50 users will be connected to another server so the concepts of load balancing we will discuss network segmentation all of the users in our network they do not sit in the same network we create different networks different networks for departments different networks for internal people different networks for communications coming from outside so we implement network segmentation and we implement network zones and based on the network zones we define the trust of the network and based on that we give access so network access is given based on the network segmentation and the placing of information systems in the different network segments so what are the different network segments and what are the trust level of each of these network segments we will discuss them one by one then we come to vpn vpn is a secure remote access connection solution let us say i want to communicate i want to securely communicate from my office to another office so between the two office locations i can configure a vpn or i am traveling 
I want to securely connect to my office. For that also, I can use VPN. So VPN helps you to securely connect to your organization. Network access control. Let us say I'm going to connect my machine to the network. Before connecting my machine to the network, the network access control will check my machine. It will check whether my machine is having antivirus. If it is not having antivirus, it will not allow me to connect. So network access control will check the security of systems before they are actually given connection to uh, networks. Port security. Port security is a mechanism that is implemented to allow or deny connections to the network based on MAC address. So allowing and denying connectivity based on MAC address, that is what is covered in port security. Then we will discuss so many network appliances, security appliances like proxy servers, gem servers, intrusion detection and prevention systems. Then we will look at firewalls. There are different types of firewalls. We will discuss the different types of firewall one by one. We will see how one is different from the other. Then we will look at security aspects related to routing. We will look at access control list. So access control list is used by firewalls to allow and deny traffic. So after discussing the different aspects that are required to implement secure networks, we will come to the aspects of implementing secure wireless connections. WPA2, WPA3, these are the, these are secure wireless protocols. So when you are connecting to a wireless device, how do you securely do it? And when you are authenticating to a wireless device, what are the different authentication protocols? So there are different authentication protocols, EAP, PEAP, different variants of EAP, 8.2.1x, radius. We will discuss each of these mechanisms one by one. In addition to this, we will also see authentication methods. We can authenticate using passwords. We can connect to wireless devices without authentication. We can use something called as captive portals. So what are all these concepts? We will discuss them one by one. So we will see what are the aspects related to wireless devices. How do we secure them and how do we authenticate wireless connectivity? Next is mobile devices. So we have mobile devices. Nowadays, mobile devices are connected to network and mobile devices are being used to process information of the organization. So to protect the information, we also have to protect the mobile devices that are connected to our networks. So different types of wireless devices. So the typical wireless device we have already discussed here, 8.2.11. Other type of wireless devices we will discuss here, like Wi-Fi, uh, sorry, Bluetooth, NFC, infrared, etc., etc. Then we will see how we can secure mobile devices. So to secure mobile devices, we typically use something called as mobile device management solutions. What are the different types of mobile architectures? There is something called bring your own device. There is something called COPE. There is something called CYOD. So what is all these architectures? What are the difference between these architectures? Which is secure, which is not secure? All these things we will discuss. So in this section, we are essentially talking about mobile phone related technologies and we are talking about how to protect mobile phones. Then we move to implementing security for Cloud solutions. Implementing security for cloud solutions in that we have information assets and information on the cloud. So providing a security to cloud related assets means enabling high availability for cloud information assets, protecting the storage in 
in the cloud then protecting the network that we have in the cloud so what are the different security aspects related to cloud information assets how do we protect them what are the different tools that we use in a cloud environment to protect our cloud information and information assets that is what we discuss in this particular section then we move to identity and account management so whenever we are trying to access information assets or information systems and applications we authenticate we authenticate using username password etc so how accounts are being managed so account is nothing but identity username is an example of an account username is an example of a identity what are the different types of identity we have normal user accounts shared accounts admin accounts guest accounts we will look at look at all these kind of accounts one by one the most commonly used authentication mechanism is password to secure your password usage we normally implement secure password policies so what is password complexity what is meant by password history so essentially how to secure our password usage that also we will discuss so managing identities and how to secure the use of identities that is what we will cover in this particular section then we move to authentication and authorization solutions what are the different authentication mechanisms eap chap pap 8.2.1x radius different technologies we will discuss then how do we authentic how do we manage authentication using password keys password vaults vaults tpms hsms the concept of knowledge based authentication this we will discuss and last we will discuss access control schemes so what is access let us say i am trying to access a particular file so in this scenario i am the subject and the file is the object so when a subject is trying to access an object there is a flow of information between the subject and the object this flow of information is called as access the controls that we implement to control the flow of information is called as an access control there are different types of access control attribute based access control role based rule based mandatory access control discretionary access control we will discuss all these concepts so in this we will discuss authentication management authentication protocols and access control schemes so the last topic we have in domain 3 is pki now what is the purpose of pki so we said to secure communications we use secure protocols and secure protocols use cryptography for example web communication using https that is a secure communication and that secure communication uses https protocol and it uses cryptography in cryptography we have different kinds of we have different types of keys cryptography uses different types of keys and there is also something called as asymmetric cryptography that is used in uh, https communication so whenever you are using cryptography to protect your communications that requires what is known as a public key infrastructure so public key infrastructure is required as a part of many uh, secure communications so what is pki what are the different components of keep uh, keep uh, pki how pki helps to implement security pki actually uses something called as certificates so what are the different types of certificates that we have what are the different certificate formats so we will go through all the necessary aspects that are required for the implementation of a pki infrastructure as a part of this particular section so if you look at domain 3 of security plus you can see that domain 3 is talking about actually implementing security controls domain 1 was talking about identifying all the threats vulnerabilities and attacks 
and domain 2 was giving a review of all the security concepts related to designing a secure environment whereas in domain 3 we are talking about how to implement cyber security in our organization so as a part of implementing cyber security we have to use secure protocols we have to implement endpoint protection we have to implement application security we have to implement network security which includes load balancing network segmentation vpn nac port security deploying network devices like firewalls proxy servers intrusion detection prevention systems access control list then we move to the different aspects that we have to follow to implement a secure wireless network then we discuss or we go through the concepts that we need to implement to protect our mobile devices or mobile phones in our network we also have information systems and uh, services on the cloud what are the uh, different mechanisms that we have to implement to protect our information systems on the cloud then we move to implementing identity authentication and authorization to achieve authentication authorization and to manage identities what are the controls that we have to implement we will discuss that and finally we also discuss the concept of pki which is a critical aspect of cryptography so by the time we cover all the concepts in this particular domain we will have an idea of what are the controls we need to implement in order to secure any it infrastructure environment